Okay. And so we're going to the bear. Okay, cool. Okay. I think last year, uh, one of my most popular videos was relating to using OBS and loopback audio. And OBS is like a really, really cool free tool to use, um, which lets you kind of set up your laptop for recording for live performance. And you can also kind of configure it so it can have chatting and it can have, um, you can kind of bring in comments from other people. Um, I, what I want to look at today is the platforms that I was using before. The platform that I was using for my live streams last year was I was using OBS to set up the streams in advance, um, set up all my scene collections and bits and pieces, and then I'd stream it th uh, through Restream.io, which would then spit it off to YouTube, to my Facebook page, my personal Facebook account, um, Periscope, and I think there was a couple other places as well which it was going through automatically. Um, what I'm going to look at today is I just want to have a show you some um, browser-based streaming platforms and, and just talk a little bit about the differences between the two. So on the screen I've got here now, I've basically got the dashboard for StreamYard and Restream. Everything that I'm doing in this is actually with a free account. So I stopped paying for Restream because I wasn't distributing it. And I'll get into a little bit about the features and stuff at the end of this video. So first of all, what I want to start with is I just want to talk a little bit about the setup to begin with, just to show you how to get the audio and the webcam information from it. So the first thing I'm going to do is Command Spacebar brings up the little um, system prefs so I can do a search for my applications and I'm going to go into sound and the first thing that I want to check is that the audio inputs for the webcam um, by default are set to my microphone so you can see here as I'm talking that you've got the input level there if I wanted to use loopback this is where I'd go in I'd have to set that all up um, best thing to do if you want to have a look at the loopback guide then go on to my other video about the streams so we've got here so we can see that the input has been set to the Q16 audio and that is the, the mic I'm talking into here that goes in there and goes to my computer and then, and then this is what we're going to be looking at when we go in. Now, the reason why I'm recording off my camera and not on the webcam is when I set up OBS to do a screen capture, it hogged my webcam and I couldn't use that on multiple platforms. So I'm using my iPhone camera with my Mac Pro and that's using an app called EpoCam. And I've done a little bit about that, but I'll put a link in the description about where you can find that. So let's just start with StreamYard. So when you set up a free account, um, this is the kind of link that you look at. And one of the good things about StreamYard and Restream is if you were looking, what I've seen that worked really, really well, um, there's a page on Facebook called Ocean, Ocean Arts, and that's how she's based down in Cardiff Bay, and she's done some virtual open mic nights using StreamYard. So what you can do is if I enter the broadcast studio, is this is actually really useful for um, setting it up. So you can see now on my screen, uh, we can see that the we can actually set the settings up. So this is my name. I want to change the name here. I could just go JC, but I'm just going to leave my name like normal. And so I just need to check that's not my name correct. And then if I wanted to change the settings as well, I've got camera device there, and the audio will just be set to default. The speakers are currently set to Maddie Extreme, but I don't need to hear myself, so that's not a problem. And the other thing I'm probably going to do just for now is mute my speakers because I don't want feedback loop when I connect my laptop, which is right here. And the laptop is just going to be another input, so I can show you what I'm doing. Um, so that's all working. The, you can see that the camera, which is just out of shot, um, it's like a wide angle. You've got the mic here, which I'm talking into, and you can see a nice little level. So if I press Enter Broadcast Studio, this is what StreamYard looks like. So this is the layout for StreamYard. Now, there's a couple of things that we've got in the section. So when we come in, I've got the webcam and my microphone. So at the present time, this is like the blank canvas that you come in. So um, if you want to do up a mic night settings, what you can do, it's a bit like a Zoom call where you can actually bring people in and it'll actually show you the stream camera setting. I um, just want to check now that uh, the yeah, it's a bit blurry, but you know, I'm not too worried. If I was using like a dedicated webcam, I might get something like that. So as I talk to this camera, you can see that I come off here. So I'm just going to change over to here, just so my name's all right. Um, there's a couple of different layout settings. So the other thing I, if I wanted to do now is if I wanted to invite someone to the studio, I'm going to copy this to the clipboard here, and I'm just going to invite myself on Facebook. So then I come up. So now I've got two inputs on StreamYard and we just go out to stream. So there's two camera inputs and we can look at changing the layouts and stuff. So like, this is like something that could be default settings. Um, the other thing that would be pretty useful for um, StreamYard as well is like say I wanted to present something so I could share my screen. 
and press OK. And I'm going to go to Chrome tab. I'm just going to bring in a YouTube channel. So I'm going to bring that in. And then on my StreamYard, um, you should notice now that there is like a setting. So if, as I went up and down, it would actually kind of move up and down this, the, this image. And this is what we'd see. Now, the, this is pretty This is pretty nice view. If I wanted just to go full screen with the presentation, I could click the this button here and that goes there. Um, so that's if I want to have people on the left hand side, that's a really good option to have stuff. If I wanted to remove the presentation, that's still actually down here as well. And if I wanted to remove um, my other camera, I could go back to my presenting thing, or if I take you off, take you off, and that's pretty much how it kind of goes. So it's a really, really cool little setup for streaming. Now, the other thing that we've got as well is there's sections and stuff for like comments. So if I add in like a, like, you know, questions and everything, um, so I'll quick look and see if that changes. So if I want to add, if like people go on to a Facebook chat, if, I, if this was connected to my YouTube channel, um, comments here, any chat that would come up would come in here, and then we could actually ask questions this way. Um, there's also other actions, other sections that we can add, which I actually really like about StreamYard, is that we've got this section which it says a scrolling text, and so there. And then if we did um, ask a question, we can kind of put some prompts and stuff, so we could have like a settings of different bits and pieces. So that's really really cool. Um, if you're on the free account, then the branding power by StreamYard will always be there. Um, if you can't change the logo or you can't remove it, so that's something that if I click on that, it'll say you need to pay to upgrade. And you're limited as well in terms of like the background. Um, I've like this. Um, you, you can upload you can upload images, but if you've got to pay for the amount for that, so the only thing you can really do is you could change the settings and everything um, for that. And then private chat, if you want to talk between different people, I could talk on here, and then it would go to my laptop on the other computer. And that's more or less everything for StreamYard. So I'm going to leave this up and running, and we're going to have a quick look over at. That, uh, restream and just show you the differences. So that's going to keep going. We're going to switch over to here. Now, if you notice that this is section, what you've seen before is I'm using Restream with OBS, and it was basically the the feed link that I'd send OBS would then go here, and it would split off to all the different so the sources. But you've also got an option with um, the Chrome browser to actually set up a studio settings like Restream, so it does the same thing. So just going in. And I'm going to probably do something similar again if I want to invite guests. So look, click on add person, copy that. Go up here. So again, this is this is the restream layout, and this is how it looks when I come in. So again, I'm just talking to this camera, and this is the mic. One of the things I quite like about um, Restream compared to StreamYard is it comes up with the audio meters as well, so it can actually tell you how loud my volume is in terms of um, the the signal. And again, this is something when we looked at the beginning. This is why, like when we come from microphones, audio input is default, and that's just what the system setting on the microphone is on the Mac. For Windows, you might just need to look into that. There might be more options, but default is basically it's just copying the microphone input and the outputs on the sound preferences in your system settings. So. This is the first default setting, and again, I've mentioned that we've got the branding again at the top for the free accounts. If you've got your own logo and you wanted to pay for the subscription options, then you could change it. And the other thing to look at as well, if I just switch over between, um, let's just take you off. So this is like the other thing we can look at is just like the the default, like if there's any like settings and stuff on the stream. So like you can see that there's a bit of a color difference between the two, as well. So I'm just gonna add the other lot in. So you can see that this is StreamYard, and if I do something similar, if I can bring these back in, um, there we are. And then, so this is the talk, and we're going to talk about like a page or something. I could use this, like for sharing screens. Um, th there's a couple more options that I quite like. And then, say I wanted to talk, I wanted to bring me up on here, then that would switch. And then, I quite like the click and drag on the, on Restream. Um, Anything else that's pretty good? There's no ticker tape option for Restream at this present time, which StreamYard's quite cool at. Um, I quite like the chat as well in terms of um, both of them do the job that you want them to do. If I just go back to here, so I've got three inputs um, for the show. Um, yeah, so then like if you had a chat, if you had any comments from YouTube or something, and then this is where they'd come up. And the other thing I quite like is doing the automatic re the, the resize, which is something that actually re the StreamYard will do as well. So that's something that both of these options have. Um, and the other thing, the benefit is if you've got this option as well for the restream chat messages. So only basically, it's like anytime you bring this up, any old chat messages don't show up. It's anything that's come up at that moment in time. So you might miss something out. So if you notice, these ones aren't coming up from this setting here. 
So the only other difference that I've seen since that is also um, on the premium account for Restream, there is an option where you can have like pre-recorded videos uploaded. So if you wanted something that wanted to go out as a premiere or like you wanted to have a section that was pre-done. Um, so if you're doing like a streaming show where there was like a 15 minute segment for something that you want to go off and just put that on while that was playing, that could be done as well, which I quite like. But again, you're paying for the options. So for free options, either of them work really, really well. Um, they both do what you really needed to do. So the only thing that we need to look at then so if we're just looking at the pricing plans between StreamYard and Restream, there's there's for both of them for the free options, you've got an op you've got this option to um, pay monthly or yearly. So there's a discount in total. It's something similar happens when we looked at the distribution platforms or the um, online distribution platforms like DistroKid, TuneCore, and everything. The pricing's all a little bit different, so it depends on what you want to pay for the services that you get. So. If I was going to look at doing like a monthly um, podcast with guests and I wanted to just bring them in and out or ask questions via YouTube chat, both Restream and StreamYard will do it. Um, if I wanted, I could I could also do this for free using OBS and incorporating the Restream plugin like I've done before. Um, that's a bit of code that does it. The branding isn't quite as good and this doesn't look as, you know, it doesn't look as seamless as what we've got here. At first glance, Restream looks a little bit cheaper per month. So monthly is $20 a month. Um, StreamYard looks a little bit more expensive. So you've got $20 a month. Um, the one difference is that it comes in like if you want to get rid of the logo. So I've got up here the StreamYard logo. Um, if I I've got up here powered by StreamYard. If I pay the twenty dollars twenty dollars a month on the annual subscription, I can I can take that off and put my own logo in. For Restream to get the if we just go here, if I want to get this logo off, I've got to go up to the professional plan, which is fifty dollars a month. If I'm looking at if I want to stream to say I want to stream to my Facebook page live and I want to stream to YouTube at the same time, I can do that pretty straightforward. And I've done that with um, StreamYard and I can do this on Restream. But if I want to add a Facebook group or I want to add another uh, like a custom link, there's custom destinations. This is this is where like it gets a bit more complicated. So I can I can you can you can't stream on the free account on your Facebook page to restream you've got to pay for the twenty dollars a month and the Facebook page counts as a custom extra so if I want I, what I've done for my um, previous live streams I was paying 20 pounds a month using um, OBS and I was using uh, basically the, the standard version I was using OBS streaming into restream and then that was splitting it off the destinations to YouTube to Facebook my personal account and also Twitter via Periscope and you could do Twitch and stuff as well so there's like there's no limit of what you can do but they count Facebook pages Facebook groups and if you want to add a custom link to stream onto Instagram then you'd be looking at that um, you'd be looking at paying like the, the extra months and then if you're looking at using the web studio then this is where the you have to pay. You have to go up to forty-five dollars a month to kind of get rid of this branding here. So it's something to think about. You've got fifteen days storage time on the platform for recording. So once you've recorded your stream live, you can actually download it off there. Whereas I know that if you upload straight to YouTube, they don't give you the option of downloading the video recording like you do if you upload it yourself. So this is something that, like, if you're going to do the backups and stuff, then having the pro accounts on either of them would work really, really well. And you can, like, again, for both of them as you're going through, like, you can have up to 10 participants you, um, on the pro accounts as well. <clears throat> Restream looks like it's a better value at a cheaper price. They've gone, right, we're a little bit cheaper, so we're going to cost that. But then if you want to actually get the same features as what StreamYard are up for, and if you want to go for the Chrome-based browsers, then StreamYard might be a better option. And it's got um, three destinations. I think that's more or less enough for what you're starting with. If I was going to do it again, I'd probably go, I'm going to go to my YouTube page and my Facebook page, and I might go to my personal profile as well. That'd be enough. Um, with the Restream, I can do more already. So I was paying for the one... I was paying for my YouTube page, which is free. Um, my pay Facebook page, my personal profile would all cover the, the standard as well. So I, I can kind of cover that. And I'd also get Twitch Periscope off the standard. So it, it, it's splitting hairs a little bit. Um, you can add like a destination ARTMP on the pay as well, which is like streaming to Instagram if you want it. So everything that you can do on this, you could potentially do um, with OBS. If you want to spend less time actually working on the scenes and setting it up, then Restream and StreamYard are really, really useful and really, really cool. For me, I thought Restream was a bit cheaper and I was kind of weighing towards it. Um, if I was looking at paying for one of these now just for like doing like, you know, live streams and hosting, I might, I'd probably pay the $20 a month on an annual subscription and go with StreamYard. I was actually changing my, my decisions. Like when I started filming this, I was thinking, oh yeah, Restream's a little bit better. 
I do like the layouts and stuff, but I'm not going to pay $45 a month to get rid of that local Restream branding, which is a bit of a shame. But again, it's working out what you think would be best for you. What I'll do in this video, what I'll do at the bottom now is um, I'll give you links for Restream for... Uh, I'll give you some links for StreamYard and Restream so you can have a look and try them out. Um, there's free accounts so you can have a play around and do test broadcasts. Everything that I've been doing, um, you can do as well with the YouTube so you won't have to pay anything. If you don't mind the branding, like I've done more work. If you want my guide for the OBS, there's a link down below in the descriptions. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit more. Um, I'm going to be getting some feedback from the guys. I know like, the, the downloads for the streaming platforms have been really, really good. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. What are you using? Which one do you prefer? Is there, anyone, is there another platform that I've missed out? I'd love to see and try out and check out as well. But um, yeah, stream, of the two, I'm kind of leaning towards StreamYard at the moment for this, this kind of thing. And I'll talk to you all soon. Nice one, guys.